This is John Johnson of Asterisk Pro. Today we are taking a look at Isabel 4.0. This is a virtual machine that I loaded with a backup from a production system to give us a real world feel for this demo. The system set up with a trunk and cell phone extensions so we can make and receive calls. Specifically today we're we're looking at conference calling on Isabel, something that's near and dear to everyone's heart. Everybody does a lot of this. There are three main types of call conferencing. Um, the extension-based three-way, that's actually handled by the phone set itself where you might be on a call and decide to conference in a third party and uh, hit the conference button, put in their number, uh, invite them to join and hit the conference button again and all three of you are then having a conference call. That doesn't actually uh, use the asterisk system at all. Uh, is, is really just handled through the telephone set. And then there are static conference rooms. Let's uh, take a look at those. That would be under BBX, BBX configuration, internal options, conferencing. Okay. We've got three static conference rooms set up on this uh, telephone system. Uh, let's take a look at this top one here. It's got the 3015 number that's in range with the extensions on this system. Um, it's assigned to it. It's a general conference is what it's named. It's got a user pin so that users can uh, are required to log in. Uh, an admin pin so that uh, administrators can log in and have some administrative ability in the system. We uh, uh, are not playing a join message. Um, we are set to do talker optimization. That's a good feature. Turn uh, With talker optimization, Asterisk treats talkers who are not speaking as being muted, meaning that no encoding is done on transmission and the received audio that is not registered as talking is omitted, causing no buildup in background noise. Good feature. Uh, we also have this extension is set to, uh, we have a lot of other uh, uh, things uh, that we can do, but uh, specifically we're set up here to allow a menu. That uh, is the menu that's actuated when you press star during a call, a uh, conference. Okay, um, that menu, let's take a quick look at those, uh, that functionality. When a user dials star during a conference, they can mute and unmute themselves, increase or decrease their volume, um, a, few, a couple of things that they can do. An administrator has quite a bit more ability. They can mute and unmute themselves. Uh, they can also kick uh, other users out of the conference and get a list of uh, the users that are in. In fact, they can, they can kick all the non-administrative users or mute and unmute all non-administrative users. It gives uh, an administrator quite a bit of uh, uh, control in a conference call in these static conference rooms. Um, we, it's pretty easy to get to, to uh, access these. If you're on an extension uh, on the same phone system, you just dial the extension number. Okay. Um, you notice that had a custom announcement that was accomplished by finding the uh, uh, static announcement in the uh, uh, file system and uh, overwriting it with a custom recording. A um, little, little involved to do, we're not going to show that today, but it does uh, make for these conference rooms to have a very professional sound when people reach them. Uh, it's easy to reach them from the inside. From the outside, we need to create an inbound route, a number that points uh, to this conference room. We've got one in place on this one. And that's how external users can reach the same conference room. Now, um, the, the, this type of conference room is really convenient for people to do a lot of conferences, to have their own. Um, one of the things we have to watch out for is these PIN numbers. If you are protect, if you have an outside number where people can just call and, and dial straight in and, and use the conference, um, if you don't change the PIN number every so often, people can start using your conference as their conference. 
Uh, so uh, uh, we have to watch out for that a little bit. But uh, static conference rooms have their place and are very convenient. Then there are the dynamic conference rooms. Let's take a look at that functionality. Over here under PBX, conference. It's a whole other interface. Notice that we've got uh, uh, about three of them set up right now. Um, let's uh, add a new one just for this uh, demo. And we'll call this the uh, General Dynamic Conference. And make it mine. We'll give it a moderator pin. We'll let users come in without any pin at all. We have an ability to to set a few things like, for instance, we can make it so this uh, conference uh, is recorded. Um, we can make it so that uh, everybody has to wait for the leader before they can uh, uh, begin to communicate with each other. We can also make it so that they can only listen. There's no, no talkers uh, talking amongst the users. After we've uh, set up our options and used our pin, put in our PIN numbers if we're going to use them, then we have to schedule the start time. Let's see. Let's start that then. And we've got it set for an hour with 10 participants. We can cap that those participants at whatever number we need. OK, let's save that. Now, that scheduled time and that hour of duration is not a limit on the actual conference. It is the amount of time that the conference will appear in this interface. Uh, this, that way you can, uh, conferences can be scheduled in advance and they don't clutter up the interface until the, it's time for them to be used. Now, uh, and, and even when they disappear from the interface, if you're in that conference, it continues, it'll continue just fine. Okay. Um, We've got the, this new conference set up here with uh, 33546. You notice that that is not a number in range with our extensions. So we have to dial a different number to access this conference bridge. And that number is 5555. Please enter your conference number followed by the pound. OK, and that's that number right there. Three three five four six. Please enter your password, followed by the pound. And we set up that password of one, two, three, four. You are currently the only person in this conference. Okay, so we have a user in the conference now. If we click over here on the interface, it'll refresh and show that we now have that user. Let's go ahead and have somebody else dial in too. And again, that's the number over here. Please enter your password, followed by the pound key. We're just going to bring this one in as user, just the pound key. There are currently one other participants in the conference. OK, so now if we hit uh, here and refresh, we show that we have two users. Let's take a quick look at that inside the actual conference. This is uh, where we can administer the users in the conference uh, in real time. And it shows by the caller ID our two internal extensions that are dialed in and uh, their status, how long they've been part of the conference. We can mute them. We can kick them out if need be. And that's great. That uh, That's our internal people, but again, um, we had to use a special dial plan number, 5555, to access this. How do we get our, in, our, our external callers into the conference? Well, we had to do a little configuration to accommodate that. Let's take a look at that. First of all, I created a miscellaneous destination called Conf Access. And all it does is dial 5555 for us. I also created an IVR, uh, 
auto attendant called combat men put a custom announcement in in there to personalize this for the the uh, company um, made it so that if they enter a wrong digit uh, one, uh, not one of the options it'll loop back on itself and insist they try again uh, if they don't do anything it'll go to a voicemail account that we've set up a phantom account to uh, allow the uh, conference administrators to receive messages and we have two options one and two number one goes to comp access miscellaneous destination and dials 5555 for the caller from the outside and we have an inbound route a telephone number that's pointed directly to this IVR and there we go so let's go ahead and uh, call that number from an outside phone Pressed one. Please enter your conference number followed by the pound G. And this is the conference number here. Please enter your password followed by the pound key. And this is just going to be a user, so there's no actual password, just the pound key. There are currently two other participants in the conference. And there we go. We now have three people in there. Let's click on the conference over here to refresh that. And there's our three participants in our conference. And here we go. We can see our outside caller by their caller ID. Been in for 13 seconds, uh, along with our two previously dialed in users, one four minutes and one at three minutes. Uh, again, we can mute them or we can kick them out pretty straightforward uh, conference bridge. Now the nice thing is um, these conferences are dynamic so after their schedule after the schedule is over they disappear from the menu when the last person disconnects from it they qu uh, they become non-functional so uh, people can have a conference on demand when they need them and every time it's a different number um, making this a very usable uh, uh, dynamic conference bridge. The uh, other thing that we might want to talk about is uh, the fact that we've been administering this as uh, the uh, uh, as the uh, system administrator over the entire phone system. We may not necessarily want our conference administrators to be managing the whole phone system. So let's uh, log out and come back in. I've created a limited user called Conf Admin. log in as that user and there you go they are limited to being able to see the conference uh, management here where they can add new ones uh, uh, if they need to they can delete one if they've made a mistake in setting one up um, they can also have access to the asterisk command line interface where they can do things like look and see how many channels are active right there you can see that there are three people have dialed 5555 and are in conference 33546 uh, if you do it uh, with the verbose on there it tells you uh, uh, quite a lot more uh, including their caller ID and how long they've been in there okay then we've also given the uh, conference admin uh, user the ability to access the CDR report which as you can see the 555 shows up in there as uh, so they can see how who's uh, been accessing the, the conference system via the call data records okay pretty straightforward uh, uh, limitations uh, to make it so a conference administrator is administering the conference and not accidentally uh, uh, deleting extensions <laughs> Uh, I think this is a pretty functional way of using this conference bridge. I hope everybody's learned something from it today. Thanks for your attention.